Paco uh, means the the course, like the obstacle course. It comes from the um, the Paco's, which is like a I think French military, um, like kind of like special forces. And it all it all really comes from uh, Georgia Bear's Method Natural, which is was military training that came out in the 1920s. So it's that that was physical fitness through movement, trying to be more like a hunter gatherer. You know, having um, the idea of rounded fitness and and be more more able, basically as a person. With le parcours, you you're just moving. Doesn't matter. <laughs> you just go. I, I want to be able to move. That's the point. That's why I have this body. I'm, I'm designed to get around, <laughs> whether I'm chasing food or running away from something that thinks that I'm food. I want to be. I, I want to explore the possibilities that, that I have with, with this body, and I think parkour is is a way of doing that. It's losing using your body like an animal and training to be a, a real physical being again, instead of getting stuck in, um, in, in patterns that don't, don't make any sense. Well, your body wants to survive. You, we're designed to move like that, so I think we have to, we have to practice to be, we have to be strong, otherwise, yeah, we'll just fall apart. It's too, too easy to get fat and lazy. Yeah, if you're strong enough in natural, natural movement, you can just go in a straight line, that's fine. And you get outside the crowd, you know, like that, um, like that scene in The Matrix when they're, when they're in the bit, like the fake Matrix. And they're, you know, they're walking down the street and everyone's just parting for them. It kind of feels like that sometimes. Because you're not, you're not part of that stream anymore. You're, you're not walking that path, you're walking a different path. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't think it's that they don't understand. I think that they're the people whose, whose parents said, um, you know, while they were balancing on a, on a little wall or something, their parents probably said to them, get off there, you'll fall, instead of be careful. <laughs> the, you know, the, I think that's the only difference. It's the foundation movements that are going to get you everywhere if you can do the basic basic things then you'll you'll be able to move on and no you will naturally progress without even noticing it but with your movement i think the most important thing is to be quiet even when you're running or um but especially when you're landing and rolling and things there shouldn't be lots of noise it should if it's if it's slapping it's it's it means there's too much impact going into your bones, basically. Oh, no animal moves like that. A wallaby, maybe, you know? <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> but nothing stomps around. It's, it's bad for you. If you can take the impact in your muscles and keep it quiet, um, you'll be safe. I think that I wouldn't still be doing parkour if I didn't have that martial arts background. Um, because I would have hurt myself really badly in the first few months. Um, yeah, you're just going to ruin your joints and things. Because it's it can be high impact if you're doing it wrong. It can be very very bad for your for your body. And if you don't have someone there to tell you how to do it properly, you're yeah, it's it's not going to be good for you. But I think yeah, I think they do um, complement each other definitely. The physical training will it'll always plateau. Any any physical training is gonna plateau. A human can't jump from a static more than like ten, eleven feet or whatever, but it doesn't matter what height that eleven feet is at, you know. So that's that's the mental training as well. Mental endurance. It doesn't have to be a hard thing, but to do it when you feel like you can't do it, you know? Yeah, to be able to push through the the pain of the repetition when you're when you're tired as well, you know, especially to try and do that thing that you can do when you're fresh and it's explosive and fast and good. Come back to it when you're wasted and and then try it again and see 
Let's see how it is. That's I think that's that sort of attitude will get you a long way. I think it helps you see different ways of yeah, of getting through a space or even different ways of moving. I think, yeah, you need to be able to visualise a lot. Because if you can't see yourself doing it, you can't do it, you know? Especially if it's something where you really have to push yourself, uh, you need to, yeah, you need to visualise it really, really clearly or it just it never pans out. If you can't see yourself doing it, you, you, your brain generally won't let you do it. You'll just shut down and, and, and not move, eh? When you're out um, playing with a new way of movement or um, or you can see someone else doing something odd that you can't you can't picture yourself doing so you just you, you just need to play and well a lot of the time you have to think up new ways of doing things just to keep yourself interested you know because it can be repetitive and you know you can you can go to a space and you, the, the most efficient way is to do this but really there's a million different ways you can get over a couple of handrails. I'm an only child, and and I blame that on a lot of <laughs> blame a lot of my faults on that. Um, so I wasn't very good at the old uh, team sports, um, and it just seemed that that's that's all there was. Um, and I never, yeah, I never really got it. Um, and then yeah, I started surfing, um, and got really into that when I was um, in my teens, but. Then I started martial arts, and that, yeah, that completely changed my attitude to fitness. Uh, I guess like now it's a, it was about f practicality and being able to push push the limits of what what you can do with with the human body. Um, and I still practice um, Bujinkan Nimpo Taijutsu, which is a collection of nine Japanese koryu, which are very finicky old Japanese martial arts, basically, lots of weapons and um, battlefield techniques, so it's all quite brutal. <laughs> and then not like a sport like judo or something. But, um, but it's practical. It's yeah. simple and precise. Yeah, I think they do um, complement each other, definitely. I'm more confident than I used to be, just from physically conquering an obstacle. Um, and the little um, successes that you have along the way with your training, you're noticing. Yes. You're, you're, you are evolving. The, the stronger you get, the more able you are. You know, I can do this thing, or I can have the, the nous to just keep hitting something until I, I do own it. You know, I, that, that's what I get out of it. The, um, yeah, being able to walk around and think that I can I can fucking do anything. The consciousness of of movement, being being conscious of my body, and and really being able to listen to it, you know. When you're young, you can be really rough to your body, and it doesn't doesn't really matter, you know. You you you'll be fine in a couple of days. But the older you get, the more you feel it. I think that's the this has just been my way to really learn my body, learn how it works properly. I'm 9,995 days old today. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I'm getting old. Uh, 10,000 days is like the end of your childhood, or no, the end of your youth, you know. I, I just feel like I kind of know what I can do with my body now. Um, now it's uh, it's time to really see how strong I can be and how learning how to maintain that, I think, is, is the trick for me now. Well, I think that's the difference hey, between, yeah. between the youngins and the, the people that are going to keep doing it is having that, that understanding of the, the philosophy behind it. You know, you can always chase the movement and try and try and move like that but if you don't have that idea that it is about being strong and natural you'll, you'll, yeah you'll never progress
progress.